Are we getting a sense, Sherry, of really just of some of the names that are going to be included on this? So Country Garden, as you said, is on the list. Sino Ocean Group is another one that we're hearing. So it's a really big shift in stance for, for policymakers in China. Uh, this was a, a sector, as we know, just a, a short time ago, really, that Beijing was saying needed to, to rein in excessive debt, excessive leverage, finish existing projects as well. Uh, but the fallout from that, which we've been tracking since, has been very, very noticeable, very sizable. And so now Beijing is realising that it needs to take serious steps to try and address that. So names like Country Garden, even being on this uh, on this list, really point to that because it has historically been one of the most important Chinese property developers, uh, a lot bigger than Evergrande, for instance, even though Evergrande, of course, has got a lot more headlines over the past couple of years. Uh, but, but Country Garden, a name as well that missed payments on dollar bonds for the first time ever last month. So now we're hearing, and as you just said, we've been reporting across the week that China is taking a lot of steps to try and address this, uh, putting together this list of property developers that it's prepared to support through the crunch. And so that's really the latest update here. We, we're getting the sense of the names. Uh, Country Garden, Sino Ocean, uh, CIFI Holdings is another that's also missed payments uh, said to be included. Still don't know the exact scope of the funding as yet, uh, but a lot more details still to come on that one. And on those additional measures that the Chinese government is taking to support the economy, now we're hearing that Chinese lawmakers are also calling on banks to do more? That's right, yes. Yeah. So it really just does appear that the chorus of this is growing. So we're hearing from China's top lawmaking body. Uh, this is the standing or some of the standing committee members of the National People's Congress. Uh, that body has nominal oversight of the PBOC uh, under the guidance of the Communist Party's leadership, of course. But it certainly does just add more pressure on uh, banks to do more to support the property sector. And so they're saying that banks should step up support or funding for property developers to reduce the risk of additional defaults, ensure completion as well of housing projects. But that, that uh, member, although standing committee members also had criticisms for other parts, are saying that banks as well need to do more and that they can pass more of their profits on to the real economy, Sherry. What are local governments doing? Well, this is an interesting measure as well that's coming through. So we're seeing these sort of real, real time, real world sort of measures. And Shenzhen is a good example of this. So Shenzhen, just to put it in context, it's a major tech hub in southern China. It's actually just across the border from Hong Kong here. And it's considered a tier one city. So it's been a very popular place for people to be moving into. Uh, so the, the, the measures though that we're seeing here are really to try and increase home buying in this market. It's as well been hit like other cities in China. And so it's going to be lowering the down down payment ratio for second homes to 40% from as much as 80% and that should be effective Thursday. So today uh, local media is reporting that one. Uh, they're also saying what we're hearing from the city's housing and construction bureau that local authorities are relaxing the so-called definition or the definition rather of so-called ordinary housing. Uh, so that's non-luxury homes that also qualify for lower down payments. So analysts are saying that this is really just another step to try and encourage home upgrades, boost demand as well for larger homes. And so it tells us that the tier one city's mortgage policy has been further eased. Uh, but yes, yeah, Sherry, certainly just another step. Of course, we've seen them in other cities across China to try and, and reinvigorate the property sector, such an important pillar of China's economy.